I am Coach Belina. For those who are new, I am one of the senior coaches on the Coach Kelly J team. Um, Coach Kelly will be joining us. She's just running a little bit late. So she'll join us um, as we go forward. So um, can we get a couple of quick wins? Anyone want to share a quick win of the week? I have one um, or two. <laughs> it's it's totally um, it's not coach related. I don't know if that if that'll count. Yeah, that's um, fine. Okay, um, but I'm I'm making it a point to kind of step out of my box, and I'm trying new things. Um, don't laugh. <laughs> but I bought uh, a pomegranate for the very first time yesterday. I'm going to have that later on. Never had that before. And oxtails. Don't take my black card. <laughs> never seen them. Never cooked them. Never had them. But we're going in. I'm going in. <laughs> so those are yeah. um, two new things. And I'm excited. I'm slowly but surely going to new places, treating myself, and I'm trying new foods. Awesome. And I'm excited. Awesome. Well, hopefully you enjoy. <laughs> you. Hopefully you enjoy. Thank Any you. other wins? Any other wins before we get into questions? I actually got my first appointment booked for a discovery call. Yay. So I'm happy about that. Thank Congratulations. You. And How did you uh, come across that client? I think it's um one of the people from the Facebook groups. You told me to get involved in the Facebook groups, and I did, and I got a lot of responses yes. from the fellow nurses and nursing students. And yeah, almost like every hour, there's a comment from my postings and my comments. So you were right. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, any other wins? Yes, I would like to say joining this class. I've looked at a lot of different life coaching classes, but this one stood out to me particularly. So I'm glad to be doing this finally and to get the journey started. Yes. Well, excited to have you here. Um, we all have a mission to help our people. So I'm glad mm -hmm. that we're, we're doing it together. Yes. So what questions do we have? Go ahead and go into our Q&A session. Any questions as it pertains to your business or, of course, the program itself? Yes, Karen? Good evening, everybody. I hope you all are having a good evening and had a good day. The question that I have and what I can't wrap my head around is the wait list. Can you help me with that? So is it once I um, offer a free gift, they go get the free gift and then are they put on a wait list? Then how is that working? I'm trying to get the wait list um, process wrapped around my head. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So typically um, when you're trying, when you're trying to get, have your first workshop, you may not have 25 people ready to, to have a conversation, or you may not even know if there's a big enough audience for, um, you know, the offering that you may have. So sometimes when you have a person on the line, or if you're, they find you on social media and they say, Hey, I want to learn more you can add them to your wait list and let them know I'm getting ready to open doors and I'm going to have a workshop. Um, I can give you uh, early access or, you know, something like that where they're waiting for that particular workshop or training that you're going to provide. So it's kind of just a holding pattern to one, identify the, the need in the market for it. And then two, gather some um, pre-vetted clients. Now there's, it's not a requirement that you do workshops. You may say, I just want to do discovery calls for now. And I want to instantly have people to enroll. You don't have to do the, that particular method. That's just 
um, an option, you can just have a one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, yes, I can offer this to you and then offer your program and book, you know, have them close in the, a sale. Um, so it kind of just depends on that. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. What other questions do we have? Let me know if it is your first time on the call. I might see some new faces. Wendy, welcome. Karen, yes. Emily, welcome, 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 everyone. Regina, welcome. Sherelle, welcome, welcome. Okay, so um, welcome to the Tuesday night call. We are so excited to have you here. We start our class with the, kind of the Q&A side of things. Um, and the, the rest of the call, I should say, um, is dedicated to the mastering client enrollment. So that is what you're getting to witness um, at this point. Um, so what are some questions that we have? Any other questions? Chandra? Sandra? Kendra. <laughs> okay, sorry. Kendra, yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is my second call. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be posting the um, the Facebook post um, to my personal page. Mm -hmm. The I can't think of what it's called, like I help but people. that one. <laughs> and so after I do that, I'm kind of, I'm trying to map out mentally the, the steps after I do that. So I post that and then I've heard discovery calls, but I'm not for sure what that is. Okay. Okay. Good question. So discovery call is essentially sales call, a sales call, um, where you're gathering information from your potential client to in turn, of course, um, hope to, to sell a product or service to that person, but we call it discovery okay. call. Okay. And those calls are to help, I guess, is to help you know better of, of what type of program to put together. Is that correct? Are you or? For, the, for the sales call? Yes, ma'am. Every call? Or for? So the discovery call is, um, yeah, designed for you to meet a, a potential client and talk to them about what, it, what you offer and then sell okay. them on that. Okay, and then one more question. Mm -hmm. um, after the initial post and any replies, those people would go on the wait list until we get down, <laughs> down yes, the, the road. And so how you can think about it, the wait list is typically designed for people who are kind of want to going to do um, group coaching as well, because in uh -huh. the workshop, you're converting multiple people at one time. So you'll typically will put those people in a group versus if you're doing one on one coaching, you can just have a sales call. Same, like mm -hmm. you said, the discovery call, and then you can um, immediately enroll them in your one on one program. So gotcha. some people in the group will be a one-on-one -on -one coach. Some will be a group coach. So just so you all don't think that you must do it this way, mm -hmm. you can understand the parameters of why um, you have each. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Stacy. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. How are you? Good, How's everybody good. doing? Um, this is my first call uh, period. I couldn't make the um, the onboarding call because I had a couple of doctor's appointments that, that was already that were already scheduled. Um, so basically, this is my very first call. So I I my I guess my question is, what is the um, purpose of these calls and the onboarding calls, or am I going to get that information if when I listen to the replay? So the Tuesday 12 is on is the onboarding call, which is essentially to make sure you have 
access to all of the programs you've purchased, your logins, your credentials work, uh, ensure you know the schedule for each of the calls that we have. We have the Tuesday night. We also have a Wednesday tech call. We also have this call, of course, as well. So the onboarding call is going to give you all of the information on, okay. on what each program is providing from a delivery perspective. And then the Tuesday night call, which is this call, the first half is dedicated to Q&A sessions just like this, answering business-related questions or program-specific questions. And then the second half of the call is dedicated to mastering client enrollment. So essentially, you get to practice amongst each other how to close a sale. And we're utilizing the Rulio method to help you um, ensure you're kind of follow, following the format that Coach Kelly taught us and that will support you in the development and kind of closing of your clients. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. So this is right now is just any questions and answers. I think I think I need to listen to that replay first before I have any, before I, you know, ask any other questions. I, I'm I'm thinking that replay will answer some of my questions. Okay. And I mean, you're, you're welcome to ask them here as well. If, oh, okay. if you don't happen to have time to listen to the replay. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Coach Kelly. Oh, you're on mute. Here I go talking. You can't even hear me. I was saying, hey, y'all, I was welcoming you to your first live call for uh, for your program, for the people that have just joined us. Um, for the people who are not new, we promise not to haze anyone new in this space. We uh, are inviting you guys to our coaching family, and it's going to be amazing. Um, have we answered all the questions for this evening? Are we ready to jump into simulated role play or where are we at? I think we just wrapped up questions so you can go ahead and do the role play. Okay, cool. Thank you, Coach Walina, for opening up for me. Um, tonight was my son's first um, MMA practice. He wants to get into MMA. There's that. Uh, he's 16 and I don't want to say I'd rather him not. It's what he really wants to do. So as they get older, you have to let them, you know, Go and explore and do the things that they want to do. And uh, and so that's where we were at. It was supposed to take an hour. It started at 6. And at 7.30, they were still going. So I um, called my husband. I'm like, you're going to have to come over here and pick him up because I have a class. But looks like he's going to love it because at the first break, he says, I want to do this for the rest of my life. So there's that. How many of us are 40 and 50 years old and still don't know what, what they want to do with their life? Absolutely. So I, I count that a win, even if it changes later, the feeling of knowing, you know, you, you want to do something for the rest of your life. That's an amazing feeling to have. And I'm sure you guys can speak to that as coaches where you're like, I, it feels good when I'm helping somebody. I, I love this feeling. I love, I love being able to fulfill my purpose, but I also love being able to help someone find pieces of them that they were missing. Right. So, all right, I take it you guys have um, watched the pre-call for tonight, so you'll know what the Rulio method is and know what you're, what you're, what you're viewing. So who do we have that, um, that wants to practice tonight as the coach? And Stacey, if you could do me a favor and unraise your hand so I won't get oh, confused with, uh, with volunteering, you're good. So who wants to, if you could raise your hand, if you want to volunteer to be the coach, we need two coaches tonight and two clients. Who wants to volunteer to be a coach? And it's got to be somebody that it's not your first time, not your first time in the class. And then as far as the client, it can be your first time. As long as we want you to use a situation that is a real situation, because we want to view what your really motion would be around that thing as you're practicing the coaching methodology. So I'm looking around the room. All right, come on, Rachel. All right, Rachel is volunteering to be our first coach for tonight. Um, Candace, are you volunteering to be the second coach or are you volunteering to be the client? I was volunteering to be a coach, but okay, cool. I'm here for whatever. Yes, I'll have you as the second coach. 
coach number two. All right, so we will have Rachel go first. Who can volunteer to be Rachel's client? You have to have a real situation that you're willing to open up, that you're willing to talk about openly and um, and, and really go into that space. You can just raise your hand if you're willing to do that. Anyone, anyone? No one here has any problems. I can be a... Um... The client. Okay, who is this? That? Is Nicole? Sorry, Nicole. I'm looking because I have pages. Let me see, Nicole. I think you might be on another page. Are we not on the same page? Wow. I know. Okay, I see you now, Nicole. All right. So if I could ask everyone else to stay muted the entire time ask everyone else to go off of camera because we want this to be as simulated as possible with whatever it is they're talking about. We don't want them to be looking at facial expressions or anything like that and feeding off of uh, off of things that they shouldn't. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this time is I'm going to highlight Rachel. Um, why is it not letting me highlight you, Rachel? I don't know. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to highlight Nicole. And they are going to seemingly be the only two in the room. I'm going to hide myself. And Nicole, like I said, I know this is your first time in this space. Just use a real situation. Do what you would really do. If you would not sign up, don't sign up. Um, if you would really tell her, no, this isn't for me, tell her, no, this isn't for me, because we want to give people real experiences. Yes. Let me get my timer up. And Rachel, you know the deal. You have seven minutes. Ready, set, go. Hey, Nicole. So glad we get Hi. to connect tonight. <laughs> Hello, Coach Rachel. How are you? I am well. How are you doing, Nicole? I'm doing now, good. Where I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, Nicole. I see. I see that smile. Um, I'm excited <laughs> that we get the chance to talk. Now, where are you from, Nicole? Originally from Maryland. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, my family. We've been in Georgia for 17 years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're down south. I'm here in Charlotte. So oh, yeah. So nice. not too far. Not too yeah. far away. Yes. Enjoying this nice fall weather. Um, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, so I take it as an honor, Nicole, that we get the chance to talk. Um, I know it's a big deal, you know, to sign up to do a discovery call. So I um, would love to hear more about what made you make the decision to sign up tonight. Yes, so I am looking into um, becoming a life coach. Um, but where I'm struggling is whether I want to go the business coaching route or if I want to do more personal wellness route. Um, and so it's because of experiences that I've had. You know, I've been, the company that I currently work for, I've been with them the entire time I've been in Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. Business, finance, operations, so you name it, I pretty much have done it for this particular company, which is my experience on the business side and why I think that would be a good route to go. Um, however, as a result of that business side and challenges and setbacks and things with the company, I've also experienced the personal um, aspect to where, you know, I literally had to step away, uh, take a leave of absence, focus on me, kind of regroup. And I've learned and still learning um, how to put me first and my family first and not just the job and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I have experiences on both sides that I can 100% speak to. Um, I don't know, parts of me feel like business comes easier, but then parts of me feels like the personal wellness comes easier. So that's kind of where I'm struggling and trying to, I'm on the fence. So that's where I, I am. Yeah. Look, Nicole, I appreciate you capturing so eloquently just, just the struggle between I hear a part of yourself feels, you know, like there's more 
right? There's more, you're interested in the wellness, you're interested in exploring that, but then you have this aspect of your life that you're good at, you're comfortable with, you know what to do. And that's such a real struggle between those two mediums. Um, so for you, what do you think it is, Nicole? What, what made you initially even think about going into wellness or what pulled you in that direction? Because of where I was before I went to a doctor's appointment and my blood pressure was three digits, top and bottom. And my doctor said, you're in stroke zone. You need to go on FMLA right now. Wow. And I felt perfectly fine. But granted, of course, the work was beyond crazy, long hours, mm -hmm. very stressful, um, into two interim positions on top of you know my original role um, and I literally left the doctor's office drove half of a mile home let my leadership team know I'm out of here and I see you when I get wow. back whenever that is and just sitting during that entire period of leave um, just sitting with myself you know and counseling and reflecting like you know, what's truly important and where I need to be before I can return. And when I do return, have I, do I know what my triggers are? Do I know how not to fall back into old habits? I'm a worker bee, you know, I just work, 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 work. I come from a long line of worker bees yes. and having to deprogram that so that I do put myself first and my two older daughters, you know, they see that I'm prioritizing me and family and not a job. Mm. So coaching is, you know, I'm very passionate about helping people get to where they want to be. And because of that journey that again, I'm still going through because I just returned in January from leave. Okay. Um, okay. But being on this journey, I'm so passionate about getting people, you know, pull your head out of the sand and focus on you. Because so many times, if you are out of the picture, your position is posted before you even realize what your next thing is. Yes. And that's what's important. So again, coaching 100%, that's where I'm going. But which side? I can talk business with my eyes closed, but this personal journey is more passion and means so much more to me. I saw you, Nicole, light up literally as you were just sharing your story <laughs> your journey you got there was just something you just got so excited I saw that come out of you um when you think about choosing between the two um is anything you think getting in your way or making it challenging for you I think because um I'm probably getting in my own way because I am an overthinker um I will drill a hole to China and back on one thought so I think getting in my own way and because I'm still on this journey I'm not I don't see myself as the expert or subject yeah. matter expert as I would in the business arena you know so I think that's where I just get in my own way mm. I so I hear you way. almost talking about your mindset how you're thinking about it you you know just kind of what's in your mind and how you're feeling prepared for it um, and not quite feeling ready yet. Like you have yeah. everything you need to do that. Nicole, Correct. Yeah, yeah, I hear you nodding. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. that's such a common feeling. I think we all feel like we need to be ready, right? Like there's going to be a sign that says you're ready before you exactly. can take a step. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but I also, I also hear you... Um, you know, there's a possibility of you recognizing that there's going to be a journey, right, to mm -hmm. get ready and go into this. And so um, I, I know it's no accident that we spoke today. And I really think I have an opportunity that is perfect for you, Nicole, um, for the place okay. that you're in. Could I tell you more about it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So I have a program that literally helps folks go through the journey when they're in the middle they know their call to be a coach they know that they are supposed to be in this moment but they need the support the accountability the mentorship to help them kind of 
begin to find their place, right? To find their voice, to learn how to speak up, how to get the mechanisms in place and how to decide. So one thing that's part of my program that I think would be perfect for you is just having the opportunity to have individual support, you know, just to have someone just like we're talking now, who is mm -hmm. going to listen to you, going to to be able to hear where you're at and to walk you through that coaching process. And as you're watching it up, as we're doing it together, you'll be able to see what you need to do to replicate that for other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, cause mm -hmm. I think the learning is both ways as you're Absolutely. learning, you're also seeing what you need to do. So it would be a commitment of 997. It's a 30 day boot camp, but I feel like that will position you, Nicole, to be prepared to go into the place that I can tell that you're destined to go into. That's this is where you're headed. Um, this is where you're headed. Does that sound does that sound like something that would be a good fit for you at this time? It does. I I, I think that sounds like a perfect fit. Absolutely. Yes. I have a few questions. Um, okay. So I, I heard you say it's a 30 day program. What happens after 30 days? So after 30 days, you will have, first of all, in the 30 days, you're going to have everything you need to begin to take the next steps. And so by the end of the program, right, the goal is that you will be positioned to, like you said, at this point, you're not sure, but you will know, you should be sure, <laughs> you know, at the end of the time, right? That's one of the things that we're going to work on. And then give you the opportunity at the end of the 30 days to go into a longer time. If you want a longer, more deeper mentorship program, those opportunities will be available as well. Awesome. Okay. Right. And will there be... Um... So is there like a network of folks I'm like so glad me? you brought that up. I'm so glad you brought that up because there is a community. So when you join, you will get the opportunity to be first part of a Facebook community of other folks who are in the network right now. You know, there's another um, 40 to 50 coaches who are right now who are working on the same concern. And so they get on the Facebook group. They're talking to each other, encouraging each other, you know, and I could see that being a perfect place for you to mm -hmm. be, you know, because mm -hmm. that community, sometimes it's um, it's where how we grow together. Right. It's how yes. we grow as we're in this um, and what we learn from each other. Absolutely. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, this sounds great. I'm excited. Uh, all right, Nicole, yeah. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take, take, her her take her payment. Uh, um, can, I, can I take your payment right now, Nicole? I take your card. Yes. I'm ready. I'm going to give you my husband's card. How about that? Hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yes, I'm all right. ready. Awesome. Congratulations. All right, you guys can come back on camera. I will give the assessment. Let me remove them from the spotlight. Um, here we go. All right, good job, Rachel. I will now give my assessment. The, you know, I'm creating on the Rulio method. That is the rapport, the underlying issue, letting the client decide, um, letting it be easy, and then the overall feel of the call. So the rapport was really, really good. The call took about nine minutes. The um, the rapport was really, really good. You made her feel um, heard, warm right there at the beginning. You guys always have to keep in mind that when people are coming to a discovery call, the first thing is to make them feel like they're in the right place because they come on the call uneasy. So before you can even be talking about a program, offering anything, you've got to establish like a common ground of a safe space. Y'all with me? Okay. Um, in the beginning, when you were establishing that rapport, I felt like you said her name a few too many times because it was starting to sound like, okay, Nicole. Okay. Yes, Nicole. Yes. Yes, Nicole. So it was kind of sounding like um, robotic for a minute there until you got comfortable. So tell yourself, you know, go into the call. I'm comfortable. I'm here to help not here to sell anything. I'm here to see if I can help. I'm here to offer an opportunity if it seems like if it's a good fit. If it's not, that's fine too. I never get on a call for a yes. I get on a call for a decision, right? For them to say, yes, this is for me or no, it's not for me. I don't chase yeses. 
I don't teach you guys to chase yeses. You want to connect with people who it's a good fit for. Okay. Um, questions, great question. When you said what pulled you in that direction, that was really good. You have to ask questions like that, that are open-ended to pull more out of the person. Because from the time that you establish rapport with the person, your very next thing is you are listening for what is this client's underlying issue? Like, why are they here to begin with? Why have they not been able to figure this out on their own? Why are they reaching out to me, another adult? They're an adult. They're reaching out to an adult saying, I can't do this on my own. So you've got to understand what their underlying issue is. Nine times out of 10, they don't consciously know what their issue is or else they would have fixed it already. And also nine times out of 10, they, they don't say it in that conversation openly. You've got to look at what they are saying and fill in the blanks to figure out what it is. Make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. So during the course of that conversation, if you can figure out with what they're saying and what their body language is also revealing, their body language, the cadence of their voice, how they're breathing, how their eyes are, are going, um, how they might pull back, how they might lean in, you're and what they're saying, you're using all of these things to determine. And was that kind of, you know, did they kind of get snippy with me right there? Okay, let me let me dig in a little bit deeper right there. That might be the underlying issue. So you don't really need to go into the close until it gets to the point where you feel like you've got a pretty good beat on it, right? And when you feel like you've got a pretty good beat on it, then you ask a question uh, relative to what you think it is, not saying, well, is this your underlying issue? Because they don't even know any of this exists. This is your secret as a facilitator. You ask a question relevant to what you think it is, and their reaction is going to tell you if, it, if you're hot or cold. Make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm. This is a masterful skill set that if you get this, you will never want for clients. Because when you get on the phone with someone, the connection will be so deep because others don't train like this. Right? So if you can get this, you're you're good, you're golden. All right. Um you you kind of let her, you have to let the client talk. But if they start rambling, you have to take over control of the conversation. And there's a fine line there because if they start rambling, then they'll start rambling some more. They'll start rambling some more. And next thing you know, it's 45 minutes. Now, they always need to be talking more than you. You never talk more than the client. You let them talk more, but you got to find that balance. Have I heard enough to ask the questions that I need to ask? to find out what their issue is. You need to be thinking that the whole time. Hmm. It does not take 30 minutes. It does not take 45 minutes, right? So um, what what is this client's underlying issue? Hmm. What do you <laughs> think your underlying issue? I'll be honest. I wasn't entirely sure. Um, I wondered if, as I heard her talk, I, it sounded like, um, she had had, you know, just kind of a a life changing event, um, but there was fear at kind of leaving what she was comfortable with to go in, jump in, and taking the leap to what seemed like she knew she needed to do at this time. Um, and so that's I wasn't sure though. I I wasn't entirely sure, but that's kind of where I was. Okay, fair enough. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna share with you guys what I think this client's underlying issue is from listening but not being able to ask follow-up questions and we'll know from this client's reaction when I read this if that's the underlying issue or not okay, okay. I think this client's underlying issue is that she's picking between two things she really wants to go the wellness we'll call it route but she's feeling she but she, she feels much more attached to that but she's feeling a bit uneasy to solidify that as the decision for the route she's going to go because she's still on her own journey. Mm. Now, did she, did she say that blanketly? 
You know, but is it her underlying issue? Nicole, yay or nay? 100%, yes. That's what you have to be able to pull out. That's what you have to be able to pull out. When she she talked about business, she talked about wellness, the passion that she got with talking about wellness. And I don't even know if she let herself, really if, if she even realized how passionate she was mm -hmm. until Coach Rachel brought it to her attention. And when she did bring it to her attention, the client retracted back in the not good enough, not done with my own journey mode. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. Make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm. You got to be able to pinpoint like that, right? Um, so a question I would have asked once I once I thought that's what it was, I would have asked, I'd have said, you know, you are so very clearly passionate about this, this wellness side. Why is the business side even in the running? Talk to me about that. Mm -hmm. Because in her being, before it even came out of her mouth, or if it never came out of her mouth, her being would have felt it isn't. The business is safe. Hmm. It's safe. I would have also said, of business and of this wellness, which one of those do you think the world needs more of? from you look at her emotion right now she already knows she absolutely already knows don't you Nicole you already know in I your do. heart you mm. already know I do don't make me cry coach Kelly gosh <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to, but I'm I I'm not trying to make you cry. It's totally okay if you do this space is I say. Um, but I'm trying to get you to know what your truth is and not run from it. Mm -hmm. Because there's people assigned to you in that space. Just because, you know, you guys, and I'm talking to everyone, just because you have the skill set to do something else does not mean that that's what you are called to do. And you have to put that statement right there in your journey of life or whatever that means for you. Okay. Um, there's important things that the coach should have mentioned, which was community. A client should, it, when you, I want, I want to say if you have a community, the client should never have to ask, but you should never not have a community. You know, if you're if you're going into a group coaching, well, I can't say that because all of you guys aren't coaching groups. Some of you guys are coaching one on one. If there's a community, you absolutely want to mention that you want to have these things on your one sheet. When you are talking about enrolling a client, you want to speak to the experience that they're going to have as if they're already in it. Put them there. Yeah. Can you imagine what it's going to feel like? a week from now when we get started for you and to be in a space where there's going to be 11 other women figuring out the, the same space and stage in life as you are. Yeah. I, I I want to be able to support you in that way. I have the perfect environment for you. Not, I think it might be good. I think this might be a good fit for you. If If you think it might be, don't even offer it. You have to know. Clients by certainty, not maybes. Make sense? Yes. In that space, they buy certainty. Um, when you say the price, it shouldn't be followed up with the price is nine ninety seven, but you're gonna get this and you're gonna get that. And you're gonna because what that feels like is you don't believe the price. Okay. The price is what the price is. You don't need to justify it. You, everything that comes with it should have said before the should have been said before the price was quoted. And you know why I teach to do it that way is because if you tell someone what the price of your program is first, they're basing it on price only. 
and you don't want people to base your experience on price. They got to know the price because they got to know, you know, ultimately, do they have the money to sign up? But you want them to base it on the transformation. Know the price later. Take price out of the equation. That's an easy decision. All right, questions before we go into a second set. No questions? All right, Stacy, question. Uh -oh, we can't hear you. Okay, how about now? Yes. Okay. Um, I noticed, like you said, uh, I'm I'm sorry, I forgot who was the coach's name. I'm sorry. Rachel. Rachel. Um, I noticed she mentioned, and you also observed her when she was coaching that, and I and I noticed you do it. You you tap into people's body language. Um, for me personally, that's going to be a challenge. So, what what else can I listen for? that would have me, um, that would make it easier to connect with somebody and be able to feel them and, and pick up. Is that just, is that gonna be just practice, um, gut? I'm not, I'm not sure. It will be both of those, but overtly it will be voice influx. Okay. People's, their voice influx happens without them even noticing it. Sure. Voice influx, extended pauses, speed up a voice, slow down a voice. You you have a you have a unique sense of of that because Correct. of other things you don't necessarily have. Correct. Okay. Okay. Is is it okay if I share so everybody knows what we're talking about? Oh yeah, I can. I mean, I or I can no, I can divulge it. It's not a big. It's not a okay. Problem. Um, so for me personally, I have, um, I was diagnosed with glaucoma, um, some years ago, years ago. And since then I've had multiple surgeries that has, that have resulted in a, um, limitation of my vision. So when I'm looking at somebody, it's my visions, long story short, my vision's hazy. So I don't really see people in their faces as well. I see around them a lot clearer. Um, it's a or it's a little less fuzzy. Um, but if I'm looking at somebody directly face on, their face is blurred out. So it, it would be difficult for me to read facial expressions, see their eyes, um, notice notice when they get uncomfortable if they're talking about something specifically versus if they're not. Um, so like when when uh, Rachel said, I noticed when you talk about personal wellness, um, you light up or something to that effect that she said, I, I would not be able to see that. Um, so I'm, I, I'm going to need to hone in more, which I do when I'm just on the phone with somebody listening mm -hmm. for the things you said, like voice inflection and long, those long mm -hmm. pauses. So that's that's what we're talking about. That's that that's the limitation that I have. Yes, thank you for thank you for um for sharing that with the rest of the room. I already knew, but I wanted them to be aware of kind of the conversation uh, that we sure. were having. And in that in that particular situation, when she got excited, when the client got excited, it was in her voice. She mm -hmm. sped up what she was saying. Her voice went up an octave or two. It was much more jovial and not flat. So you would have picked it up. Okay. You would have picked it up. And I'm sure you have a, a, a at this point a keener sense to those other things even sure. more than we do. So you're not at a disadvantage for sure. All right. Okay. So let me see. We have I wrote coach two on my on my paper, but I didn't write down the name. Who was it? Candace. Was Candace. It Candace? Okay. All right. Pressure. Candace. No pressure. 
Okay. okay. No, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Right. <laughs> All right. If you are new and that was cool to watch, raise your hand. That was, that's cool to watch, right? All right. So Candace and I think somebody else said that they can be the client. Okay. Tamika. Yes, ma'am. It was me, Coach Kelly. Okay, Tamika is going to be client number two. Let me see. I have Candace as the coach. I have Tamika as the client. Okay, Tamika, you're going to use a real situation. Um, coach Candace, you have seven minutes. Really listen for the underlying issue. Establish the rapport. Try not to make it seem superficial. Um, just so you guys know, we can connect on other things that are not weather. There are other things you can connect on, especially if you have a pre-form that you have people fill out. There's always something you can pull from the pre-form. Uh, I don't know what, you know, most of you guys are using CGS, but even if you're not using CGS where it has the a pre-form you can set up, many systems do have that. So that, to look on their social media, something that you can pull that makes an immediate connection with the person. The co most common ones are weather and or hair or something they have on. But when you can pull something more unique that they didn't expect, people expect, how's the weather in San Diego? Right? So no pressure, Candace. As you were gearing up on your weather question, um, <laughs> but really try to listen in for what is this client's underlying issue everyone else on the call try to listen in what is the underlying issue what is this client's underlying issue what are they saying what are they not saying the rapport is easy to get but let's really focus in on, on foc focus on trying to identify what are they saying how was that matching with their body language that is that is so very important to get that, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. So I am going to type in the chat what I'm seeing as I'm seeing it. So I need to, I'm gonna send a test right now and I wanna make sure, uh, make sure Candace and Tamika cannot see that or you can, uh, or you can put a sticky note over your computer. Candace, can you see it? Not turned off my test pre my chat previous. Okay, cool. Um, Tamika, can you see it? I saw it, but I'm turning it off as well. Okay. All right, everyone else, cameras off, but have your chat up. And just watch what I'm typing because I'm going to be typing what I'm seeing and what you should be picking up on. If you can learn to assess, you can learn to coach. All right, I'm going to go off camera. I am going to highlight our coach. I'm going to highlight her client. I know it's real awkward when you're the person being highlighted first and it's like, ooh. <laughs> All right, ready, set, go. Hi, Tamika, how are you? I am well, Coach Candace. how are you? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Where are you calling from? I'm actually in um, in Irving, Texas, which is like right outside. Of, it's a part of Dallas, basically. Okay, okay, I got some family down there. I'm actually <laughs> heading to um, Arizona. I know it's, it's on the West Coast, so it's all kind of, the same for me. <laughs> Southwest, there you go. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So what are kind of your favorite attractions to go to near home? Um, That's a good question. I wouldn't necessarily say, well, this time of the year, um, a main attraction is the state fair. So really? okay. I'm super excited about that. Um, we have an uh, HBCU rival that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So okay. really looking forward to attending that um, that game, but okay. fun times, yeah. Okay, yeah, I have a big family, so we love to go <laughs> to state fairs. All mm -hmm. of my big kids, we love it. Awesome, awesome. 
So what's connecting us today? What can I help you with? Um, well, I am starting or launching my new coaching business and, um, I'm kind of at a crossroads as to what to do. And, uh, what I mean by that, I have 17 years of experience as an educator and also as an administrator. So there's that professional side uh, to want to help um, up and coming administrators or those who are looking to, you know, climb up the corporate ladder, so to speak. And then there's the other side where I feel that I have a story to tell of how I have um, overcome some challenges. And I believe that I can really help people in that area as well, especially young women. Tell me a little bit about those challenges in that story. Okay. Um, This is based on traumatic childhood experiences that kind of, um, to me, kind of, set a foundation of just events that continue to happen through like teenage years, early adulthood. Um, Now I'm in a space where I am learning my value and discovering my own worth. And because of that, um, not wanting other people to have to wait so long to do that, if that makes sense, because I mean, now I'm up in age, you know, consider a middle aged woman. Uh, but just when I think about um, other young ladies who may have had some of those experiences, um, just not wanting other people to have to endure as long and learn sooner who they are, if that makes sense. Gotcha. gotcha. No, it makes perfect sense. And it it sounds it sounds like, hey, I have this career. I've come very far, really successful. But also during this career in my personal life, I've overcome a lot of hardships, come through a lot of challenges. I've gone through this healing journey, if you will, mm-hmm. and I want to help somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I was listening to you, it sounds like you're really passionate about it. So if I can ask you a little bit about your background, so your administrative side and as an educator, did you go like to school for that or kind of that's just where you've been working? I did. I did. Um, Went to school. um, Always known I wanted to be an educator. And then once I actually got into education, just kind of started um, because other people were like, oh, you know, you should do this or you should do this and just kind of started climbing up from there. And then I hit a wall or like a ceiling, knowing that there was there were more opportunities for me to advance. There was more room. I put it like this, but the opportunities weren't there. Mm-hmm. And so that I know that that created conflict and that conflict became a part of my story as well. Uh uh And then adding to that, some of those thoughts of, well, maybe you're not as good as you thought you were, or maybe you're not. So it kind of bled over into the personal and just me doing the work on myself. I have a question. If you could choose between the two and work for free, which path would you choose? It would, would definitely pass. Would you choose the path of working as an administrator and an educator or helping other women along in their healing journeys? It would definitely be helping other women in their healing journey. Yes. So does it sound, for me, it sounds like you have your answer. I think the question may be, 
the clarity on how to go about doing that. Maybe. That's what it sounds like to me. And because you may have been an educator and done this for so long, this is what you know. This is what you're qualified as. This is what's safe for you. This is That's what it sounds like. But I also feel that I could... So yes, it would definitely be helping women on their healing journey. Mm -hmm. But it's also... because of in in education like as I'm trying to climb right mm -hmm. so when I said that kind of bled over into the personal because okay. as I was trying to climb is things that were told to me that started making me believe that I wasn't good enough mm -hmm. does that make sense while I'm you were in the I was basically side. told mm -hmm, I was basically told Oh, you don't trust people because you don't trust, you don't know how to form relationships with people. Um, I started hearing like all these things that like, you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this. And I thought I was working on overcoming some of those things. And it just became very frustrating for me because I'm seeing that I do like, I, I know how to talk to people. I know how to form relationships with people. Um, but all of that, like me hearing that language just mm -hmm. made me come down even harder on myself. So, yes, it's helping women, but it's not only just if they're having trouble in their personal lives, but also in their professional lives as well. Mm -hmm. I want to help. I don't want other women to go through what I have experienced. Yeah. And I definitely, I hear that in your voice as well. Um, can I share something with you? Mm -hmm, please. Uh, I would love to talk to you about um, my program that I was getting excited when I was listening to you because I definitely know it would be something, um, a, a great opportunity for you. Um, I have a 30 day boot camp, and it's a community of women just like yourself that are actually building their coaching program and helping women um, or helping individuals to heal from their inner healing journey in other areas. So where you're also, you have that administrator and educator side where you're helping individuals to kind of heal from the inside out. Um, but it'll, we'll have weekly Q and A sessions, but also kind of putting that structure together to kind of help build out the curriculum. So that's where you'll be using the education side, but you can put your own spin to it because you know what it takes because you've been there, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, okay, when you're tapping into that trauma, when you're tapping into that, the communication styles, what to help and how to build your own program. So it offers that structure and support. And it's a cohort of individuals and community um, that are, you know, people walking alongside you. Um, you'll have a course of action plan, a weekly training um, modules. You'll have your own course, if you will. Um, and then at the end of the 30 day boot camp, you'll have an opportunity. If you would like, I take my clients and we work alongside a little bit more closer if that's something that you're interested in. But the 30 day boot camp, it is $9.97. So we have our program is going to start Monday, October 25th, if that's something that you're interested in. Can I ask you a quick question? No, you said the. Uh, the weekly, it's 30 days. So we meet just once a week or how often per week? During so the we have a live. Yep. So we have a live Q&A session once a week. Okay. But you'll be going through your material at your own pace. And then you're also during the live Q&A, you can submit your work, ask your questions, things like that. But yes. 
once a week. Okay. Okay. And so on those, the once a week when we're together, it's a live Q&A. So it's a group of us. That's when the group, the community comes together on those. Okay. Correct. Yep. Good question. Okay. And this is going to help me clarify which direction I should go. I mean, honestly, Tamika, I think you know which direction to go. Because I, when you came in, you were like, I don't know if I want to go the administrator mm -hmm. side and teach people about education and administration. Or I don't want more broken women to go broken as long as I have. Mm -hmm. I want to teach women what I have learned and shared the healing that I have gotten along these years. <laughs> the, the education and administration is going to come because that's what's in you. But if you mm -hmm. still need clarity around that, yes, that that is also included in the program. Okay. Yes. So if you would like to start, sign up. We have our class starting on the 25th. I could take the card and let me know. Okay. Awesome. I, have my, I have my card ready. All right. Congratulations. Everyone else can come back on camera. Dang, I left my freaking shoes. Spotlight. Remove from the spotlight. Okay, Candace. Candace, how did that feel? I am sweaty. I am so confused at where your understanding of time is. Who who is that talking? Let me see. Uh, I just I Okay, I think she was talking to someone else. If everyone could please, uh, please stay muted. Overall, it felt good. I think if I had like an actual program <laughs> to share. I like I would feel better. Um I want feedback. Okay. Okay, let me go up to the top here. Because I was typing. For everyone else that was watching me type, did that help you to see what I was seeing? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, don't pull it up just yet. Let me see. Let me get down to where we started. Okay, let me see. Okay, so build great rapport, great questions right there at the beginning. Great connecting with where, um, what are the what are the coming attractions with where you're going? That was a that was a good one to pull out. It it brought down her her guard, and that's the whole point of that rapport is to bring down their guard. Um, and then you went into a kind of a therapeutic authoritative mode are you a therapist <laughs> no I mean I'm a sort of a certified Christian therapist but yeah I seem to be therapeutic at times yes it was a very it was very um what's the word I'm looking for just uh, overly authoritative which would make them less likely to connect because right there at the beginning for probably the first three minutes of the call you were going like this almost like you were just looking down your as old folks would say looking down your snout when you watch the replay you'll see yourself did everybody else notice it you were doing this so it's like yep tell me mm -hmm. right right so it needs to feel more like more like approachable, more like coffee shop. Um, Cause it, it, that could have been the hand on the face could have been interpreted in so many different ways. Like, like it could have been authority. It could have been like, hurry up and say what you're going to have to say, what you have to say. So I can offer you this program so I can get your money. I mean, it could be, it could be received a whole lot of different ways, but then you went into using your hands a lot, which was good because it showed emotion. It showed connection. All right. Um, I said the coach having her hand on her face seems to give a little bit too much authority, not in a good way. Um, now, great use of body language. And then when she said there, when the client said there's a conflict, 
She didn't say what, she didn't really spell out what the conflict was. I didn't know if the conflict was a situation or the conflict was a person or a conflict with something like internal. I would have said, talk to me a little bit more about what this conflict is and why. Because when she talked about the conflict, it seemed heavy. It was given heavy. We need to know why it's given heavy. What is the conflict, right? Um, and then I would have, when she was getting to it and getting, I wouldn't say emotional, but more emotional than, than she had been up to that point, I would have hung around that space a little bit longer because you were getting real warm. Everything that was going on, could you guys see that? really watching you were getting real warm around it but I don't know if you knew that you were getting warm so it needed you needed at that point to slow down your pace and not double up on questions because when we double up on questions or ask a follow-up question too quickly we don't allow the client the space to think about what we just asked them and to begin to process it if you ask a coach a powerful question and then you back up from it to give them space to answer it, they'll start saying things out of their mouth that they don't realize consciously they're saying because you've tapped into a different part of them. Make sense? Okay. So I said, I would have paused right there a bit longer this would allow the client space to think through the thoughts and feelings that are coming up right now in the moment that she may have never explored before. But because of the powerful question you're asking, that gives her space to explore that. And I would say, why do you think it's important for women to get guidance on their healing journey? Because she kept saying, you know, I want to be able to have uh, um, give how I want to be able to let clients heal, walk them through the healing I went through this and so I would have brought her head on to that. Well, why do you think it's important? Now we all know it's important for women to heal, but I want her to say it because we need to bring her emotions inside of this conversation. Everything that she has felt over the years that have got her to the point to say, I want to get paid to help people get past what I've already overcome. We need to bring that emotion in the situation. That's what's going to have her not say, yeah, when is the next time that's opening up? If somebody asks you, when is the next time your program is opening up? You haven't brought them face to face with the situation at hand. Does that make sense? When you bring them face to face with the situation at hand and hold the mirror up and basically metaphorically say this is why you're here look this is this is why you're here this right here is why you're here what are we going to do what powerful decisions are we making today one of my favorite things to say on a call once i've brought up the the exposure of where we are what powerful decision are we going to make today so that this no longer has to be your story are we turning a page are we reading the same book what are we doing so you have to take clients to that space, okay? So why do you think it's important for women to heal? And and when you when you ask a, a an obvious question like that, they sometimes get in their feelings. That's fine. That's exactly what you want them to do. That's exactly what you want. What do you mean? It's why is it important? I just want to know from you why is it important for you to help women heal. Why? Tell me why. Well, because of this, 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 and this. Well, those that boatload of reasons of why is the same reason why they need to sign up for your program in five minutes. Five minutes from now, when you're going to give them the opportunity to do that. See how you make that connection? Mm -hmm. There's got to be, you guys, there's got to be a direct connection between the problem they have and the problem that, that your program is designed to, to resolve. That's how you make that connection. Um, had a couple of people with their cameras on. Please always keep your camera off because it can be distracting when someone else is moving or talking or whatever, when, they're, when we're trying to put this in as much of a simulated environment as possible. Okay. Um, 
when you went to offer the the opportunity to join the program, it seemed very, um, I wouldn't say quite robotic, but it didn't seem exciting. Like I want to sign up for this. Let me go grab my bag. It seemed like you were reading off of a list. And I know you're saying this because, you know, I don't really have that program. I was making it up as I went along, but it's, it's almost like taking it um, almost an impromptu class. I mean, the improv class. You know, taking an improv class will get you really good at at talking. Okay. Um, what else? What else? So it was just okay, and we're gonna meet on Tuesdays, and it starts in two weeks, and there's gonna be other people there. It is nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Do you want to sign up? Right. Instead of, I have the perfect opportunity for you. You and six other people, four spots already gone, but let me tell you about this in case you also feel like it's a good fit for you. So I have a program that's going to X, Y, Z, one, two, three. Um, this is what we're going to do. By the end of 30 days, this is where you're going to be. And you are going to be in a position to change so many people's lives. So there's fewer people in the world that have to go through what you went through when you went through it. So if you want to be the woman that steps into her calling and make a powerful decision today, let's go. Then the person's like, oh my gosh, yes. Make people want to say yes with the way that you present it. Right? So um, what else? What else? Yep. And then in the end, you started smiling. I'm like, where were these smiles at like six minutes ago? But yes, very, very thorough. Very, very thorough. So let me see what you guys are saying. Yes, yes. It felt like the client was yearning for the coach to lead her in that aha moment. Yep, I could see that. There was still some uncertainty, someone says, from the client at the end, in my opinion. Oh, yes, makes sense. Crystal clear. All right. What... What do you feel like this client's underlying issue was? Um, I think she wasn't, um, I felt like she knew what she wanted to do as far as um, wanting to help women on their healing journey, but not confident in what that looks like. So I think kind of similar to Nicole, where I am safe in education and administration, but my passion is helping women not to hurt as long as I've hurt and to share my healing. Mm -hmm. um, Tamika, client, how do you feel about, is that the underlying issue? Did that feel like That's part of the underlying issue. Um, I would I would add to that and say that going that route, there is. Um... Mm, can you pause right there? Can you pause? I don't want you to say it yet. I don't want you to say it yet. I want to take a shot at what I think the underlying issue is, and see if I can get close or to it. I do think it is very close to the first client, Nicole, but I think that Tamika is still closer to the emotion of it than client number one was. And because she's that close or closer to the emotion, she also knows that it could draw on her back into a dark place and season in her life. I think that there is some truth there, in my opinion. So there is, I think there's uncertainty around what would be required of me, meaning the client, what would be required of me to walk other people through this if I'm not all the all the way out of it just yet? 
So I think that might be closer. Let us know. Absolutely. I actually even felt it talking about it. Like I could, I could feel it coming up. Um, but I am still very close to those, to, to some of those, those feelings and those experiences. Um, but it, again, at the same time, wanting to, to help others so they don't have to go as long, 20 plus years, 30 plus years, 30 plus years, you know, like going through this, um, if I can cut somebody's time in half or, you know, just so they don't have to go as long, not knowing who they are. But yes, some of those emotions and those feelings are are definitely, those experiences are still, are still there. Um, but even with that, I believe I could help someone. Mm -hmm. What if I get a, I guess, what if I get a client? And I'm, I'm trying to coach her, him or her, her, coach her. And she's bringing up or sharing things that are very close or identical right. to what I have experienced. Can I hold it together and still be able to help her? If that makes sense. And that's the underlying issue right there. That's, you see that? that's the, she's not sure that she would be able to do that. And that's pretty much the route that she would be taking because they're coming to you because it's gotten so far. Mm -hmm. Right. So in situations like this, this is what I tell clients in real life. Because it can go one of two ways. Some people will take that and heal more from it because they're helping the person that's going through it right now. Some people, that some people that you don't know until you get into it, but then some people will get into that and, and be triggered with their own clients and then they're not ready. And in some regard, we can't know which one of those you'll be. It's like being born to, 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 to drug addict parents. Are you going to say that ain't never going to be my life because I saw what it did to my parents, not my truth. I'm just saying, I've coached a lot of people and I've seen all these things that I talk about. You could, one person could say, I'm never going to be like that. The other kid, same household could say, well, this is all I know. This is the comfort zone for me, right? So I would just ask you to try to, Tamika, lean into your truth and say, am I far enough removed from this to go this route? What would that look like? Because you'll see if you go back and watch some of my trainings and we'll go, we'll, you know, approach it, approach it sometime here in the future too, is that I teach clients that you cannot, you cannot be crying on the phone with a client. You cannot, it is not okay. Because they, and I'm not telling you to be detached, but they came to you for help. And if both of y'all are on the phone crying, no one's getting helped. They have their girlfriends to do that with or their friends, whomever to do that with. They are there for your help. There can, if there's tears on the phone or on the call, it's them, not you. Very, very important. Okay? But you may find that it's, it's healing for you. It depends on how far removed you are from it. Make sense, you guys? Make sense, Tamika? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it is my hope and prayer for you if you do go into that space as the route that you go, that it's more of the first thing I said when you're talking, when you're walking women through this, 
what you escaped 30 years from that it's more of, yes, I went through this, but I I help so many women now not to have to go through it. And that empowers me from the inside out. Let that be your prayer. Like, God, are you charging me with this? Am I, is this my now assignment? Is this my season? Because if he says it's your season for this, then it's your season for this. And that also means that he will sustain you through that. And that that could be part of the back end chapter 13 of 13 of your healing journey. You might think you're at chapter nine of a 13 chapter book. You coaching other people on it might be chapter 13 in real life. Make sense? So I encourage you to pray about it, lean into the process and ask for guidance on do you want me to now be the voice for this? Because if you do, I surrender. I say yes. Amen. Any questions before we close out? Questions or comments? When we have new people in the room, I always want to hear from a couple of new people. What has this first uh, simulated environment experience looked like, felt like for you? Sonia. Um, the question, the question that I do have is I sorry. heard, I'm sorry, you have, you? we can hear you, but you have to be on camera to ask a question. I'm oh, sorry about that. Here you um, are. <laughs> so the question I had, I, I heard both coaches mention community. When we're first starting out in the beginning and we don't have a community, how do we kind of get a, around that? That's mm -hmm. fine. If it was your first starting out and you're coaching one-on-one, -on -one, you you don't have a community, just don't mention it. Just speak to the experience. Okay. Great question. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Wendy. Yes, thank you. This has been great. It's my first time and um, it's been exciting to watch it and then scary at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm so glad that I'm not the one that's uh, doing the role <laughs> play I'm watching, but it was a great learning experience. Um, just a couple of quick questions. If Hopefully we have time. One is, should we um, really try to be ourselves as we're asking these questions and communicating, or should we try to keep some type of of um, secret weapon posture of a coach? Is there like a a happy medium? Because I can be like over the top, or or I could be um, maybe not. So, what's the happy medium for? you know, your posture, your um, level of communication. Yes, your your posture is being who you are because I don't want you to come on as somebody who you're not because then you got to keep that up. Just be who you are. If you're over the top, then people who want an over the top coach that do what they want to learn to do, what you what, what, whatever problem you solve, then those will be your clients. Be who you are. And the second quick question, thank you for that, is um, I noticed you ask a lot of questions instead of answer questions. Is that on purpose or was that just these scenarios? No, that's that's on purpose. The I, I need to know, you need to know what is the client's reality. So we, I don't make any assumptions about the client. I've got to ask the questions. You've got to ask the questions because you need to understand what is their view of the world? What is their view of life? What is their view of this situation? And until you understand the lens with which they look through, you cannot understand the client and be able to help them. Okay, because as a coach, just, just one more point, as a coach, we're just tempted to solve and answer. And so should we, as almost a rule in this kind of discovery phase, 
change that thought process to make everything, almost everything a question. Would you say that? Yeah, it's a it's a discovery phase. Okay. And you'll notice, I know you just got you just got into the program this morning. So you haven't gotten to the lesson yet that talks about the difference between coaching and consulting. There is a distinct difference. Coaching is more letting them come with the answers by you asking powerful questions. Consulting is giving them the advice. Okay. And sometimes you go in between two. You just need to be clear when you're doing it and they need to be clear when you're doing it. Like I'll say, is it, is it okay that I, that I offer you some advice around this or have you given this some thought? I, I don't say you have to do this. That's not what coaching is. That's consulting. Thank you. I love that. You're welcome. All right. One more Beverly Walsh. Oh, hey, thank you. Greetings, everyone. Um, my, I have two questions, actually. The first one is, you know, sometimes we, you, you do meet upon persons who, for one reason or the other, will tell you, I just need some time to think about this before signing up. So what do you say to this person who gives you that response? That is, I need some time to think. And my second question is, but let me you help you. Let me ask your first question because then I'm going to lose the second question. Mm -hmm. The first question, when somebody says they, they want to think about signing up, now you might not want to do this because mm -hmm. I didn't do this early on, but what I do is I have people make a decision on the call, even if it's no. And I don't do that so that they'll sign up. I do that so that they'll be truthful with themselves. Because a lot of people in life, it's a life pattern. They'll say, um, well, yeah, let me think about it. Well, how, how long do you think about stuff in your life? And is that what's got you where you are? I don't exactly say that, but that's kind of what I'm saying. Indecisiveness will keep you lost and broke. I don't say that, but uh -huh. that's kind of what I'm alluding to. Okay, so you need to, because up, up at the point, at the point that they need to think about it, I've given them everything already for them to make a decision. Right. So if they're still saying they need to think about it, say, so can we just agree that it's a no for now? Well, no, it's not a no. Well, it, it kind of is if you need to think about it. Like what part are, of it are you thinking about? So I'm getting them to see that they're really just being indecisive. Now, it, that you have to be brave enough to have that kind of conversation. Maybe you you guys are at this point, maybe you're not, but you have to come to the point where you're that powerful, that confident, and that impactful as a coach. Because it will take you out of, well, they said that they were going to sign up. I don't, see, <laughs> I don't see anything from PayPal yet, but let me see. I don't see anything. No, I don't play that game. I have an answer before we get off the phone. If it if it's a maybe, it's a no. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you for that. My next question is, I'm wondering if this is something that comes with experience as you coach or if there's this tragedy to it and what that is, how do you help yourself in coaching to not think about the next question? Train yourself to stay present. Say that again. Train yourself to stay present. If you're thinking about the next question, mm -hmm. you're really thinking about yourself and, and how do I get to the end of this call mm -hmm. in real life. If you are, if your primary focus is the person, then mm -hmm. you won't you won't be thinking, what do I need to ask them next? Because you will be so intently in tuned into what are they saying right now and what does that mean? Awesome. Does that make sense to everyone? So in tuned to what are they saying right now and what does that mean for what I need to find out? I don't have space. When, I, when I'm asking the person that question, I don't have mental capacity to think about what's next. I'm trying to hone in on what are they saying Right now, what does that mean? My that's a hundred percent of my focus. Awesome. 
Awesome. Thanks, Coach Kelly. Welcome. Real quick, Regina, takeaways. Yeah, for me tonight was uh, just like you said, stay present, but really focus on the body language and listening. Just really toning up my ability to listen and be attentive to that. And, you know, it's more about that person. So just for me, it's really, like you said, staying present and focusing on the body language and, and, and listening. Awesome. Karen, take away. Good evening. I thought this was a, a great session. And um, I think basically what you just said, Coach Kelly, be present. You know, don't think about what's the next question. And I think that's very important for um, all of us to remember and trying to figure out what is the underlying issue. Oh my gosh, that's so important. You know, so you can so you can tap into the emotions of the person. And I also liked just pause. You know, don't keep talking, just pause, you know, and just let it sink in and then continue. So thank you so much. Yes. And just to piggyback on that, you have to you that's a maturity as a coach to be able to pause because it is so uncomfortable when you first start doing it. It's like, am I going to say something? Are they going to say something? Am I going to say you're holding space? So you think it sounds like a long pause to them, but it's really not because at the point that you've paused is when you're allowing them to reflect. So it's more of a pause to you than it is for them. Make sense? Emily, last one, take away. Well, Emily, then Ebony, then we'll close out. Sure. Um, this was really, really insightful. And I'm so grateful that I just got the opportunity to witness this. Um, I think my biggest takeaway is, again, just um, listening and also um, letting your client decide and not being too pushy, allowing them to kind of come to that realization that this is where they need to be. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that's my my main takeaway. Okay, cool. So next week, I want new people to volunteer. Last one to close us out, uh, Ebony. Hey, um, so I wanted to, well, what I mainly took, took away from this is just the power of that pause. I have been the type where I get really afraid to just stop for a second. But I feel like I had to reframe my thinking about the pause. And now I'm more so thinking of the pause as being a gift. Because I remember when my thoughts used to be so quick, so fast, so fast. I'm thinking about lunch, dinner, got to go here, got to do that, got to go to the doctor. And I remember the first time I began to meditate, it was me allowing myself to have that pause. And that's when I realized I needed to be a coach. I was like, whoa, I can actually hear these thoughts I can actually reflect on how I feel and so reframing the thought that the pause is scary um and I don't know what they're going to say more so makes me feel like well it makes me have to reframe it to feeling like I'm giving them a gift to take a second and slow down and not have to think so much because it's not something that we should even have to we shouldn't be so quick about it all the time but giving them that gift to be able to breathe and think about their situation. And as I'm pausing, I'm like imagining myself holding up this mirror, like, look, <laughs> and letting them just have a full look. And you just, I mean, you just sharing that has just been amazing. I'm only on day four and I'm like, I could just close my laptop. I've learned it more. <laughs> I, I feel like, and I know that's not true, but I just feel like you've given me so much clarity in these few days that I just, it's incredible. And tonight has just been amazing. So that was my main takeaway. Awesome. 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 So what I want to leave you guys with this week, um, of course, you have the, the tech call tomorrow for those that want to join in on the tech call at 12 noon. But what I want you to walk away with this week is don't wait until you have a client to start managing, start managing your communication differently. Even with, now I'm not telling you to coach your spouse. I'm not telling you not to coach your spouse. I'm not telling you to coach your kids. I'm not telling you not to coach your kids. Or your I'm saying there is a way and a cadence to fruitful conversations. Space is one. How many of y'all, you know, when you're in a heated discussion with your spouse or your significant other, you waiting to say the next thing? 
listen to what they are saying. You can take these, these, these techniques and just have very much more fruitful communication with, with everyone, your kids, your spouse, your, your boss, by asking these insightful questions like, well, what made you, what made you do that? You know, instead of asking your kids, well, how was school today? Good. What, what made it good today? Why was it good? What, how do you define good? How do, how do you determine when, when school is good or not? And it's like, wait a minute. It gets them talking. And then that increases the communication, which increases and deepens the relationship. I coach my kids every day. They just don't know it, which is why I have such a great relationship with them. This is all about relationships, you guys. It's not just acquiring clients. It's enhancing your relationships and your communication across the board. I honor you for being in this space and sharing it with me. And I will see you soon. Have a good night.